Okay, I'm gonna make a real quick video in writing Snake in this very cool language BQN in Raylib. So let's start. I'm first gonna import some stuff. Then I'm gonna do an unstart. I want a grid size, which is gonna be the size how many blocks the grid has. And I wanna have a node size, which is how big a single node is. 30, 30. Uh, and the set size is just gonna be grid size multiplied by node size. And here you go, there we have a canvas. So we want to define a snake, which is just a series of positions. Um, two, zero. So I'm gonna rotate it because the head should be the last, or the first element, so I, that's easier to manipulate. And we have a candy, which is the thing I, which is what I call the thing you eat. Uh, that has a random position uh, of grid size. So now it just gets a random position on the grid. Um, okay. In the per frame, we want to draw both. So let's do color black and then draw that rectangle. I'm gonna draw the candy first. Uh, candy, multiply that by the grid size, enclose it so that happens first. Then we're gonna take that value and couple it with a plus, uh, which is gonna be the grid size. So uh, it's gonna get the correct size. That will draw a candy in a random position. And uh, we're going to do the same for the snake, only the snake has multiple things. So we're going to wrap this, go over the major cells of the snake, which will give us the positions, and then this will be X. Oh, this needs to be in here. Um, and that's going to draw us a snake, which is now in the corner. Um, okay. We want to update the snake position, so we need some time management. Let's create a game clock which is a start clock in Raylib and a main clock, which is our start clock. Um, I'll swap them around. The main clock is gonna tick each frame and the game clock is gonna... We're gonna look at the frame of the game clock um, and see if that's smaller than the um, main clock uh, time, which is the time in seconds, we multiply that by five, which would mean, um, let's close this, do the otherwise statement, which would mean if the time multiplied by five, so a fifth of the time is bigger than the frame count here, then um, we should, so it's each every fifth of a second. We're gonna count up the game clock here. Let's update the snake um, with a function that's gonna shift it to the right, or we can just shift um, make that go into this portion. Uh, what we want is the head of the snake, so the first element, uh, updated by a direction. We need to define a direction, the direction the snake, snake is going in. So one zero is to the right, and if we then start it, then you can see the snake is going to the right. Um, let's create some inputs. We want to listen for key dot is pressed, and then we go over multiple keys key dot right, key dot down, key dot left, key dot up. Uh, and if we do slash, it's gonna save the indexes that are active. Um, let's store that in A for active, I guess. Um, then we go over all the active things, so that could be none, that could be multiple. Um, and we store that in direction, uh, which means if there's one active, it's gonna get stored in direction. Um, oh no, uh, now it's going to return a number, but we want to map this to actual new vectors, which are the directions. So we pick um, with this index from a list, which consists of directions corresponding to the keys, if that makes sense. So right is zero, 1, 0, down is uh, z 0, 1, left is minus 1, 0, and up is 0, minus 1. Uh, and we're picking that and we're putting that in direction. So that will mean it goes in the right direction. Okay, we still can't eat the candy, so let's make that. Uh, we're gonna check if the head of the snake um, matches the candy position. Um, ah. If that's the case, then we're eating candy. Let's do the otherwise statement. Uh, candy is going to get a new position and that range over the, the grid side, that's it. 
uh, and the snake should be enlarged. So uh, what we do is we take the snake and we compose it with uh, the tail of the snake, which is the snake rot rotated and picked. So that's the tail. Um, yeah, that should be it. Oh yeah, and now it's gonna do the pick last. I want the candy here and the snake there. Oh, I need, don't need to call snake, I need to call X. Yeah, so it's gonna eat it and the, the can is gonna get a new position and the snake is gonna be longer. Now you can't really wrap around this page, so let's add that, it's quite easy. We just do modulus grid size, which is gonna modulate around the grid size. Oh, interesting that it wraps there. Um, ah, I'm using grid size, I need node size in these positions. Node sizes. Okay, so it's way bigger. Um, so now you can wrap around the page and eat the candy. Okay, uh, lastly, you need some self intersection because if you hit yourself, then you're gonna die. That's the whole point of the game. Um, so let's check that. You want to know if the head of the snake uh, matches any of the other snake parts over the major cells, which is this. Only you don't want to use the first element because that's the head. So we drop the head and then we compare that to uh, each other element to the head. Oh. Um, and then we're gonna get a, a full array back with, if one of them matched, we want to do an or fold, which means it's either of them true. And we want to say snake is now, um, a new array one zero one two zero so that would mean if i hit myself that i'm going to start back in the corner and i guess the last thing i want is that i cannot go over myself backwards uh, which i just can do with uh, if i save the key here and don't immediately change it then i can do a check here uh, which is if key matches um, the direction multiplied by minus one, which is the inverse of the direction, then don't do anything. Otherwise you can update the direction with key. So that would mean I'm pressing the backwards, I'm pressing it to go over itself, but it doesn't do it. So I guess that is the game. And here is all the code. It's quite short, could be shorter, but I think it's quite cool. Thanks for watching.